Hello again. In this special edition of Summer of Math Exposition, I thought it will be better to make a video about the special number pi. I think we all know how pi is connected geometrically to the unit circle. It is equal to the length of its half parameter. Despite this, pi never failed to show up in some of the most unexpected forms. In this video, I will address one of the cases where pi shows up surprisingly as the result of some infinite integration. The function in this formula can be derived independently of any circle. By taking the standard parabola x squared, shifting it one unit upwards, and then inverting it. This process produces a curve where the area beneath it is equal to pi. The goal is to see how we can visually connect this circle parameter with this infinite area, which is not that clear at first sight. To approach this question, let's introduce probability theory. Imagine a cannon at the center of the circle that fires randomly and can hit any point within the circle. Let's assume this randomness is uniform meaning that if we divide the circle into n equal slices, the average number of cannonballs in each slice will be roughly the same. This is equivalent to having a straight line with n cannons, each randomly firing at the line. We can observe the behavior with a sample of 200 cannonballs. The histogram shows the distribution of the number of cannonballs received by each slice. This is an example of what is known in probability theory as the uniform distribution. The uniform distribution is a continuous probability distribution where every outcome within a specific range A, B is equally likely. The probability density function, PDF, of a uniform distribution is given by this. The reason it's 1 over B minus A is to ensure that the total area under the probability density function equals 1. It is a requirement for any probability distribution. Now let's return to the circular shape. and extend these lines to the x-axis and repeat the process. This time, the histogram will differ because the bins now have varying length. We will focus on the areas instead. If two sections of the x-axis receive the same number of cannonballs, their areas will be equal. So the height of the bars will be adjusted accordingly to maintain this balance. You may notice from the simulation that the bars are converging to some particular shape centered in the middle. In the limit, as the sample size becomes large, we can be confident that all these bars will all have the same areas due to the nature of the uniform distribution. Since the slices all have the same angles, they will receive the same number of cannonballs as n grows resulting in equal areas. So let's conserve this histogram limit where all the bars have exactly the same areas. But what is the height of each bar based on its position on the x-axis? That's the focus on the following section. Let's redraw the shape we had before. And let's just focus on one slice. The goal is to calculate the height of this bar depending on its position on x. So let's name things. Let x be the distance between the origin and the bar associated with the angle theta. And let's call the small change in distance dx the width of the bar corresponding to the small change in angle d theta. Let's assume this angle d theta is small enough to consider these two lines as nearly parallel from the perspective of the bar. Using this assumption, we can calculate this length.
We can first calculate this line using the Pythagorean theorem. It is equal to the square root of 1 plus x squared since it is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. That means also that we can consider this arc with length d theta as straight line perpendicular to the radius. By using Thales theorem, we can calculate this length like this. By the way, if you are curious about why Thales theorem works, I talked about this in my first video. Now that we have calculated this length, we could use it to find the relationship between dx and d theta. By moving this triangle like this and using the parallel lines assumption, we can now find this by using Thales again. Remember that the hypotenuse of this triangle is equal to square root of 1 plus x squared, and its side length is equal to 1. For the small triangle, we have a hypotenuse of dx and the side length of d theta times square root of 1 plus x squared. Now, by using Thales again, we can find the relationship between d theta and dx, like this. So finally, we now have d theta is equal to dx over 1 plus x squared. Since all bars have the same area, let's multiply the height of each bar by a constant to make it equal to d theta, and then recalculate the height under this condition. Given that the area of each bar is now d theta, and the width is dx, then the height becomes 1 over 1 plus x squared. So this function for all x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Of course, this is only true when we cover all the x-axis, but this is guaranteed because as we increase the number of slices, more points are covered by the same process. We have now built the function 1 over 1 plus x squared. We can now calculate the area under its curve. By increasing the number of slices, the sum becomes integral and the equality holds. So that means that the integral between minus infinity to plus infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared is equal to pi. So in this visual demonstration, I tried to show how the circle can be connected to the function 1 over 1 plus x squared to show that it's not just a coincidence how pi is equal to the area under its curve because this function is created or can be created using the circle. By thinking of x as tangent of theta, we can find the derivative of tangent of theta, given the equation we've seen before. By dividing dx over d theta, we find that it's equal to 1 plus x squared, and changing x to tangent of theta, we find the result we all know. There is one more thing I want to talk about, which is this distribution. It looks like the normal distribution, but it's not. It's called in the business the Cauchy distribution. If you have a variable x that follows the uniform distribution, then the variable y equal tangent of x will follow a Cauchy distribution, and its PDF is defined as this. You can see that it is the same equation that we have before divided by pi to ensure that the integral under this PDF is equal to 1. So thanks for watching if you reached this far. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. See you next time.